I don't think anybody is going to be fooled when I tell you that month end and period end really isn't a whole lot of fun. In fact, we know that it can be really a very hectic time. In addition to your normal day-to-day -day business needs, you've got some additional tasks that you need in order to close the month and or the year. You need to produce accurate financial statements and you need to prepare for the new accounting month, fiscal year, and or calendar year. The options available in each module vary when closing the period and the year, but the closing process will include printing reports, purging data, and closing the account period and the year if applicable. There's, again, certain times of, of the month that are really crazy, and in fact, you might even feel like this little guy. And this series of lessons is designed to make it a little less frantic, a little less hectic for you. We want to help you tackle your month-end anxieties and make it a smooth process that you can follow every month with a couple of other actions that you'll need to accomplish at the end of the year. One of the most important things is to make sure you have a tested, verified backup. If you need to restore your system back to where it was before you closed, the only way to do that is by using a tested, verified backup. You'll want to follow the suggested order in closing your modules and follow any checklist that you might have. You'll want to ask your business partner if there's any information you should be aware of before closing the month. Perhaps you've got some special programming that you need to pay attention to and attend to prior to closing. Access Sage Software Online for any important month-end or year-end closing information. For example, if you own accounts payable and you're going to need to produce 1099s, you're going to want to make sure that you've got the correct program installed in order to do that. Some of you may be very aware that at times the government changes the year-end forms. Whether it's a W-2 or a 1099, we need to make sure that the correct form is in place and you'll be able to download that from Sage Software Online as well as get any information about that program. So be sure to check in December about any other special situations that might come, up, come about. You'll want to make sure that you've got a plan in place internally to make sure all employees who need to make sure they've completed tasks have done so prior to your closing the month so that you're not going to have to run around the last minute which could be when everybody's gone on a Saturday or after hours. So make sure everybody's aware of what they need to do and by what dates. Now we need to make sure that we close our modules in the order they should be closed. And there is a certain order logic and that is to assure that every application that writes to another is processed first. For example, since accounts receivable post to general ledger, accounts receivable should be closed before general ledger is closed. This chart shows you the order of closing and you'd want to start from the top and work down. In fact, some people say, let's look at the MASS 500 task list and work from the bottom up. In this case, if I had manufacturing, you'll notice that there isn't really a hard close for manufacturing or project accounting or purchase order or sales order. They're going to close in, in different ways or with another module. For instance, if I run the period end close for sales order, it allows me to purge data and to print reports. Sales order will actually close when accounts receivable closes. But working down this list, and I think it's still valuable to look at those um, tasks in each module, but I do have firm hard closes for inventory, accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash management, multi-currency, and general ledger. And you really should be looking at them in this order to avoid potential headaches. So what happens during a month end or a year end? Of course you're going to want to make sure that all of your regular transactions have processed. You may even have some special month end transactions that you need to process. So have your cash receipts been processed? Have invoices been processed? Have receipt of goods been processed? Maybe you have special allocations that you run every month. So you want to make sure that everything that that needs to be processed has been processed and posted. You're going to need to reconcile the sub-modules to the general ledger and there's various reports that will do that. And part of month end is the purge and cleanup of data. So you want to be really careful that you're ready to close when you truly are ready to close. 
Well, do you have to perform a month end close? Technically, no, because as long as you're very careful about making sure that the posting date is accurate, MASS 500 maintains the integrity of the data. But if you want to control transaction postings, you may want to think about performing a close on a regular basis. Well, what happens if you never close? You know, as I said, the reports are going to be accurate as long as you're really paying a close attention to detail. But to avoid postings into periods that you consider closed, you really want to think about closing. For example, if it's November and I've never closed accounts payable, so I have every period open, and let's say somebody inadvertently puts that they're going to post to January. They miskeyed 11 they just had the one and they they post to January well as long as January is open or period one is open mass 500 is going to allow me to post to that period well that's going to make some challenges down the way because those really are period 11 postings so we always recommend that you do close your periods in a timely manner to avoid those types of situations